Arthur. Are you busy, Arthur? Why? Well, I know you think I'm just some effete buffoon. A what? A man of words and not of action. Hardly a man at all. Well, I think you're as slippery as an eel in an oil slick, but still a man. Because I think I've... I've found something interesting. Yeah? Have you ever robbed a stagecoach? No, never. Well, who would have even thought? Of course I robbed a goddamn stagecoach. You know I have. And what's the problem with stagecoaches? The armed man attempting to put a bullet in your head? Not quite. The odds. I mean, is it worth the robbing? Sometimes. I know. But, well, if you'd like to come with me, I can introduce you to a new best friend, and he's he's going to give you all the decent, robbable stagecoaches a hot-blooded degenerate could require. Well, I could require a whole lot. So where do we find this friend of yours? Rhodes. Because what can possibly go wrong there? Well, lead the way and we'll find out. You sure seem to have got about around here. You know me. I like to make friends in low places. How the hell you end up down here anyway? I could ask the same of you. I have a few commitments over this way. Some expenses to meet. Expenses? What expenses? Gentlemen's canes and rabbits to pull out of hats? Among other things, I had quite a nice little business going for a while. Shares in a gold mining company. Excellent returns for the investor of a certain financial standing. Until, well, that unfortunate run-in with the law. Yeah, that's how it goes. Thanks for disappearing on us during that Sean business, by the way. I'd done my part. Each to their strengths, dear boy. You know, you boys should really watch yourselves with those two families. This is a small town. People talk. I tried to mention it to Osea, but you know how he is. Anyway, while they're off chasing their pot of Confederate gold hidden at the end of some rainbow, let me present you with something real. So, where exactly are we going? The train station. The clerk there, Alden, is quite a fellow. Very informed on the comings and goings of coaches around these parts. Ah. I see. Here we are. We can hitch up outside. I'll make the introductions, Arthur. As long as I got fresh tracks to wander, I ain't complaining. That's fat. <laughs> that was some ride. Come on. Hang back a bit and let me do the talking. We don't want to scare him off. Hello, Alden. Hello, Josiah. How have you been? Dandy. And you, friend? Uh, like I said, times are tough. My missus is a bad woman. Terrible woman. They often are. But how's work, Alden? Terrible. Wages got cut again. They reckon they just invented a new horse's carriage will be the end of us. Yeah, they've been saying that nonsense since they invented the wheel. The wickedness of bosses. I know. My comrades here and I are greatly discouraged from the adequate fulfillment of our duty. A discouraged man is no man at all, Alden. No man at all. My friend Arthur here has a present for you. Hey there, mister. Hello! There. Ain't you kind, sir. Call him Arthur. He's one of us, a fellow man of distinction. Okay. Well, this is perfect timing. I think you'll like this one, Josiah. It'll be coming south down the river road through Siltwater Strand. Thank you, Alden. Thank you very much. Oh, and Josiah, 
if you or Arthur are ever out Strawberry Way, ask for my colleague there. Feller called Hector. He's also one of the... What did you call us again? Discouraged men, Alden. That's it. Discouraged men. I like that. Well, goodbye, Alden. Or should I say... Adieu. Oh, adieu, Josiah. <laughs> You might like to see that pantomime. River Road through Siltwater Strand, he said. Okay. I think I know a good spot to wait. Follow me. Okay, let's go. This way. What did I tell you? Simple as can be. Seems a lot of the station workers are in on it these days. Earning a pittance, the unions are whipping them up, so they want something on the side. Like he said, there, strawberry, could create a lot of opportunities for a man in your line of work. I ain't sure about going back to strawberry after all that market business. Didn't sound like you left anyone alive to recognize you, so I wouldn't worry too much, dear boy. All this trouble, you gentlemen are becoming quite the celebrities, aren't you? Soon you'll be on the front of a dime novel. And dead, of course. We're hoping to be long gone before that. Dutch has a plan. If anything goes wrong, let's meet back here at this crossroad, okay? All right. spot. Okay, this should do. Sure. Here. I'm hoping we won't need those. Uh, better safe than sorry. So what were you thinking? Well, according to this, the loot is located in a strong box, which is in the back. I'll put on a little performance, and you can scurry around, open the strong box, and relieve them of their goodies. And how do I open the strong box without threatening someone to open it for me? This should work. <laughs> and I can do this silently? Well, I'm hoping complete silence won't be necessary. But you're going to wish you had your earplugs. This is Damson. Oh, very good, Alden, very good. Of course, if anything goes wrong, you can wave your guns around like you normally do. Hold tight. They'll be here soon. There it is. Right on time. Let's go. Keep your distance so they don't see you. And please leave that gun in its holster for once. I'll ride ahead and get the coach to stop. You hang back. Don't let them spot you or you'll scupper the whole thing. No, 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 no. I hope you don't mind my singing. Not at all. I'm preparing you. It's a free country. <laughs> Did you say a show? It's a small penalty. Blackwater. Just... Mrs. Chester Damson. I can't. Stop the call, my good man! Stop the call! Yeah. Wow. So, now. Mr. Dempsey, why? Stop soon. The New York audience, they were rather cruel. 
New Yorkers are prigs and fools who believe Westerners don't know anything about culture. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> would, could, could you? It's, it's such a small show, but... <laughs> would you sing something for me? I, I'm looking for a mix of uh, I, 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 I don't know. Miss Damson, you owe it to West Elizabeth. <laughs> month. I can't say enough about Mrs. Damson. My me go. So sorry, gentlemen, for the interruption. Farewell. It's okay, girl. Just a scratch. Let's go, girl. Yep. Nicely done, Arthur. A little finesse for once. Well done, sir. Well done. It was easy. You did all the work. Teamwork, my dear boy. Teamwork. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, it's only good. Go see Alden from time to time. See you soon, Arthur. Tell folks what you saw here. We ain't gonna be dictated to. Sometimes I... I wonder if our point's less effective if we keep killing everyone. Maybe next time we leave one of them alive so they can spread the good word. Oh. 
That's the lost nobility of the South, shooting men on their knees. Oh, good. Get it. Yeah. They're walking, you are. Don't make this difficult. Shit, I'm worth more than this. You think you a lawman? Go to hell! Hey, you ain't got no business being here. You don't like visitors, huh? Yeah, you're funny, like a hole in the head. I ain't finished. So you're oh. ugly. I almost forgot. Empty your pockets, now! Oh, ah! <gasps> Hold out over this? My girl. You make that mug of yours scarce before I make it even uglier. Sure, anyway. Hey, Park, hold up. No! You ain't fooling me! Yeah. Ladies. He's a bloody devil. He's a kind devil. Bring me something soon if you can, Arthur. Yeah, I will. Don't you overcook this now, Pearson. How are you? Many thanks, Mr. Morgan. Okay. You're not exactly dressed for cold weather. You still glad you joined up with us? Of course. Well, we're glad to have you. Bye, Arthur. What are you doing? Prepping for a robbery. I've had a good run of luck recently. Okay. Robbed a house up in Roanoke Ridge. Robbed a couple of drunken soldiers out near the swamps. <laughs> and what are you about to do? A stage. <clears throat> well... Good luck. 
Well, you want to come with me? Now, I was going to ask Sean, but he's too much of a hothead. What's the opportunity? A bank stage, and without much security. This feller was telling me about it a couple of nights ago when we was drinking. It's going to be coming right through, and the bank reckons the cost of security ain't worth the risk. Now, there'll be a couple guys, but nothing too serious, and lots of money. Easy money. Oh, well, that's always the dream of every thief. Easy money. Well, like I was saying, my luck is in now, Arthur. Well, then, why not? Who are you taking? I think we need a girl. See, I got a plan in mind. Well, in that case... Tilly, you free? We got some work. Sure. What kind of work? Stagecoach. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. Come on. Let's mount up. Okay. Follow me. There's a good spot where we should be able to cut it off northwest of Dewberry Creek. And uh, you're certain this information sound, Bill? After that mess with the Cornwall stage, I want to make sure we're not riding into another army of guards. Yes, I'm certain. So what's the plan? I was thinking a little womanly distraction. I figured that much. But what's the story? Route, number of guards, you know, important details? Just do exactly what I say and you'll be fine, all right? How about we do exactly what Tilly says? I'd feel a lot safer. Because I've done all the groundwork on this. Next time she brings in a lead of her own, we'll all bow down, I promise. I'll remember you said that. You follow orders, stay alive. That's what they used to tell me in the army. That kicked you out of the army. They did not. I beg to differ, Marion. Have you been going through my things? You shouldn't have left it out. Can you believe this, Morgan? I don't trust her any more than I trust that Kieran boy. I never have. Running with them foreman boys all them years. She can turn on us any minute. Just shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. You have no damn clue. <laughs> all right, just take it easy, you two. Get your minds on what matters. Do this right. Let's cut up through the creek. Spot we first picked out for a camp. A dry riverbed? Yep. Who the hell suggested that? Mike, I believe. Well, that don't surprise me. So the stage should be coming from over there. What you want me to do? But you just act dumb and silly and get the thing stopped. You know, like you do. And what you mean by that? Oh, come on, don't get all precious and stuck up on me now. I don't like your manners, Mr. Williamson. In fact, I think you're an obnoxious idiot. What'd you say to me? I didn't say enough to you, you useless half-man. Half-man? Half man, what does that even mean? Do you two stop arguing? He started it. Here's a goddamn stagecoach. We doing this? Yes. Come on, both of you, follow me. What's the plan? There's been a change of plan. Yes, you act dumb and get them to stop. No.
inside. Damn, it's locked. I'm gonna blow it open. Stand back. Chasing it all over New Hanover, but God knows who watching. Got it. Right. Let's split up, get the hell out of here. Okay, but you owe me my cut. Don't think I'll forget. I know, I know. Go on. I'll see you back at camp. The O'Driscoll got this bridge, fellas. Hold up. You best clear off. You idiots really want to die over a crossing? Shoot the fool! Come on, girl. Idiot. Whoa, easy. Reading betrayal in your world, Miss Grimshaw? Not reading, miss. Idleness. Idleness is betrayal because it means I work so you don't have to. That's not right, is it? I guess not, miss. You're right not, missy! On! Hey, you know something? When they was talking about hanging me, I just kept thinking of you. Oh, did you miss me? That's nice. No, precisely the opposite. I was thinking even if I die, at least I won't have to see that toward no more. Oh, I like that. That's funny. Yes, uh, I'll remember that one. <laughs> Okay, son. Yeah. 
sure. I don't know. You don't sound okay. They're chasing us, Dutch. They're... They're chasing us hard. Sure they're chasing us hard. Because we represent everything that they fear. But if we stick together, and we stay tight now, there's gonna be tough times ahead, I can promise you that. But we are going to make it to paradise. Paradise? Yeah. I ain't never gonna leave you, son. Don't you ever leave me. Knowing that, that's paradise. Maybe. No. Not maybe. Maybe is doubt. Doubt is the end. Yes, Dutch. Say it. Yes, Dutch. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But together, we can achieve beautiful things. Alone, we're sickly bison, waiting on the wolves. Arthur? How are you? Oh, I've had better days. Well, what are you reading, Miss Karen? Some silly romance. How can romance ever be silly? It's all we have. Trust me, this one is silly. <laughs> a banished prince, mm -hmm. a servant girl who's really a princess, and a wicked stepmother. Are you ever intending to do any work, miss? Oh, Miss Grimshaw, the Desert Rose. You know, my dear, some people say you're an old crow, but I tell them that's nonsense. I tell them you just keep one in oh. your ear. Oh, you animal. <laughs> <laughs> What, you just keep crows up your sleeve? That's for me to know, dear boy. Right. Fine morning. <laughs> Still reading, I see. Yes. I'm done working. Uh, I'm not, Miss Grimshaw. I know you work hard. There is... There is something about you, Mary Beth. There really is. Thank you. Quite a lady she's becoming. Hey, Karen. <laughs> really. Quite something. Hi, Tilly. The old Dutch charm. I guess so. Well, I ain't Are saying you nothing. Nearly finished with that? Not yet, Miss Grimshaw. Well, hurry it up. Have you seen the way Dutch looks at Mary Beth? Just be quiet, Arthur. Like a dog with a piece of steak. Just stop it, will you? You just keep telling yourself what you need to hear. Stay away from me. folk silly damn voices <laughs> stuff shirted windbags <laughs> but we're even worse what have we done huh 
We put fellas in leg irons. <laughs> we killed each other. <laughs> Invaded Cuba. And now we're about to invade the Philippines. <laughs> and this is the land of freedom? It's ridiculous. This isn't a land for men. It's a land for money. Oh, Arthur! You smell. It's cologne. It's liquor. It's cologne from Cologne, Germany. <laughs> oh, I, I just had a few nips, Arthur. I'm not drunk. I'm just happy. <laughs> you know, you ought to try sometime. Drinking? Happiness. Try happiness. Just, just a little, huh? You ready for that reading? Oh, you ain't doing it. You're ridiculous. You sound like a child. Well, I am a child. A child of God, and, and God gave me the ability not to read. <laughs> you gave me your word. I said I'd try, and I tried. It's not for me. Arthur, help. The boy's an idiot. You're wasting your time. See? Arthur knows an idiot when he sees one. <laughs> he recognizes one of his own. <laughs> I'm not giving up on Dress in the tan. Weird, aren't you? Give up on me. Then he's got a point. What? So we can scribble in an old journal like you? Oh, thanks. All right. No skin off my nose. I think I saw one of them Foreman brothers again. Them boys used to run with. What the hell are you with? dressed in? They ran with me. They kidnapped me when I was 12 years old, right from my mama. Just so? Malcolm Foreman. Well, he treated me real bad. He was bad. Know how I slit his throat and ran away? I never felt bad about killing him. I ran back to where my mama was working, but she died. I was falling into trouble. Dutch. Dutch, he found Hello. me, saved me, raised me, treated me right, taught me to read. He ain't perfect. But he's the closest I've met in this world. Ain't it so, Arthur? We all loved you, Miss Tilly. Even them of us with... Cold hearts. You was the sweetest little thing we ever saw. And the saddest. You're one of us now, Tilly. Don't worry about them no more. It's just... Those bastards stole so much of my life. I know. You know, vanity is a sin, Mr. Escuela. So is judging others, my little friend. Me da used to say, the bigger the box, the smaller the gift, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Your da? Yeah, me da. Yeah, from the sound of things, he was quite something. Yeah, quite something. My father, he always say to me, if someone disrespects you, Fillet them with a knife. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I wasn't disrespecting. I was just looking oh. after your mortal soul, honest. Get out of here. Hey, Arthur. Well, we know you ain't a vain man. We know you ain't a wise one. Now get out of here. Do something useful. You'll be able to see your face in those. You, uh, wonderful folks. Mind if I sit down? <sighs> Quite a bleeding knife, eh? Woo! -hoo. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite a life. You know, my whole life. Been on the run. My dad was a wanted man. Till they found him. Then they didn't want him so much. The British chased him over here and shot him in his bed. Tough business. And we never got that new start. I got sent to reform school. Didn't reform me too much. <laughs> I tried to kill Dutch first time I met him. <laughs> you all heard that story, right? Screwed a lot of them, I say. The whole world can go to hell for all I care. The only thing that matters is the tiny number of people that aren't liars and cheats. Well, well, most of them are liars and cheats, but, but only on the outside, not inside. Oh, hey, Arthur. If you know what I mean. The Maguire family history. Don't we know it well? I wear my heart on my sleeve, Morgan. What can I tell you? Right. These few boys had the good sense to get rid of the damn English. They ain't nothing worse than be one of their colonies. I'm telling you. Bunch of Protestant know-it-alls, I tell you. Ridiculous. <laughs> Who the hell do they think they are anyhow, huh? Makes me skin crawl. Every time I hear the sound of that, that voice. Old Dutch knows. I see an Englishman. I have to kill him just to get a bit of bloody peace. <laughs> ah, I'm only joking. I love the English. It's the Scots I can't stand. John. You always did fancy yourself as a lawman. I need to sit a minute. Oh, I'm tired. Real tired. All this walking, all this standing. It's not for me. I'm designed to float. Eh, not for all this... this land. It's too much of it. It's just too much of it. No wonder your whole lot went crazy. You gotta head out to the sea. <laughs> Even old Dutchie, it'd be good for him. Did you know the Dutch were seafaring folk? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I laid eyes on him the first time, I loved him. He was so charismatic. But I, you know, I still told myself, I said, Pearson, that man needs some sea air. All that brood and harumph, harumph. <laughs> He's looking at all this damn grass and sky all the time. We are meant to swim, not ride around on donkeys. It's ridiculous. You know, when I was in the Navy, Men could fight until they were a hundred. Now look at us. All sick and weak and pathetic. Every one of us. Every bloody one of us. I think we're gonna need more than sea air, Mr. Pearson. You'd be surprised. It works wonders. Not against Pinkertons. He likes Cole. <laughs> He's American. <laughs> oh, he's Irish. Just look at his name. Uh. Just a dumb Irish bastard who can't pronounce his own name. <laughs> if you say so. I do say so. Call him O'Driscoll. Say it now. But he likes Cole. And you like breeding. So say call him properly. Call him. That's better, boy. 
That's better. Gollum? What are you talking about? Don't you stack two. That's how you say it. Well, I'll be sure to tell him that. Hey, come over here. Come over here, O'Driscoll. You know, I ain't no O'Driscoll. <laughs> Our old neighbor back in Donegal was called O'Driscoll. We couldn't stand him neither. You want some, big man? Don't annoy me, boy. <laughs> ah. 